All right, welcome back. Now it's time to connect some dots. Now, obviously, we have seen the connection between a rapid increase in bond yields in the stock market. But part of the story is the action in the U.S. dollar. Rising bond yields are generally dollar bullish, and we are seeing that with the firming of the dollar in 2021. Now, for all the talk by politicians of wanting a strong dollar, the sweet spot for multinational corporations and the American consumer, obviously, is it shouldn't be too weak or too strong. Now, right now, the DXY index, uh, which measures the dollar against a basket of other currencies, turning off almost a perfect double bottom, which holding the low of 2018. Uh, I bring this up because there are historic correlations between the dollar and stock performance in different industries. Your biggest winners, uh, when the dollar moves lower, you can see on your screen. Uh, and of course, what happens, this is for the last six months, uh, but the inverse happens uh, when the dollar gets higher. Uh, and so a lot of these big winners right now are so-called rotation plays. Everyone's pounding the table on them right now. Uh, they've made some pretty hefty moves. So I just want to say be careful. Now, my next guest he was one of the first to say to get into these, so I'm glad we have him. Bonson Group Managing Partner, David Bonson. And David, you know, nobody really talks about the dollar. It does have an impact, right? It impacts everything, commodities, to, to every publicly traded company in one way or another. It, where does it get too strong for you? I mean, I know we're not there yet, but is there a point where it gets too strong and has deleterious impacts on the market? Yes, it always depends on why the dollar is getting stronger and why the dollar is getting weaker. I think people sometimes just want to believe the direction itself is what matters. But remember, Charles, uh, stocks did pretty darn well in the 80s and the 90s. And you had a really strong dollar through that period. Um, in the 2000s, you had the dollar weakening for totally different reasons. And when the dollar was weakening in between dot com and the financial crisis, stocks were doing really well. So it's kind of all over the map. The biggest problem is that the dollar sometimes strengthens because of really bad global economic weakness. And that's not a good thing. Right now, it's sort of that middle ground spot, as you said. And I think that the market is fine with the dollar being in this sort of tighter range. OK. Hey. You were 100 percent spot on with your oil call. Uh, of course, it's, it's getting a, 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 you know, a, a major boost from some of these draconian actions from the Biden administration, which you also predicted. So I'm hearing West Texas Intermediate crude oil at 100. Is that getting a little bit too amb uh, ambitious? Well, remember, if anyone is calling for $100 oil, that's not a good thing. They'd be calling for that because they're predicting that basically the supply cannot end up keeping up with the demand because they overdid the production curbs. You can't just turn the rigs back on like you can a light switch. And so there's the possibility that demand really outperforms expectation and supply won't be able to keep up with that. And that would not be a good thing. I don't think it's very likely, but I do think it's possible. Yeah, by the way, we got the rig count today. From November 25th, we went from 241 now to 310 rigs, uh, U.S. oil rigs. You know, I, I thought that turn in of itself was bullish, but it's a little bit simpler uh, methodology than perhaps what you use. Let's talk about the Fed, uh, David. Uh, Jay Powell, you actually said, I think I read somewhere, that you think it's actually a shame that investors uh, were expecting more yesterday. So your point here is that Jay Powell did the right thing and it's just Wall Street sort of having another one of these tantrums? I think that yesterday's reaction was so hysterical that some traders, I don't want to use the word investors, that traders actually thought he'd <laughs> use the words Operation Twist. The traders thought he'd come right out and say, what, I mean, what guys like you and I already know, if the 10-year moves to a point that they become uncomfortable with and 150 is not that point, then of course they're going to use yield curve control and Operation Twist and all the other Fed put machinations that have existed. But uh, the idea that Powell is going to go tell traders what they want to hear, I think that's the part I was sort of mocking in my commentary. <laughs> hey, your commentary is always great, and I appreciate you coming on. David, congratulations. You really are hot, my man. We'll talk again real soon. Thank you.